The College of Physicians and Surgeons of Ontario protects and promotes the health and safety of the public by regulating the practice of medicine in this province. My name is Bob Byrick and I am a physician. At some point, all physicians and their family members become patients. And as a patient, I take comfort in knowing that the college exists to ensure the public protection and provide guidance to physicians in the practice of medicine. Our out-of-hospital premises inspection program is an example of how we work to advance patient safety. We were given the authority to inspect these premises in 2010. Since then, we have ensured that the staff working in these facilities are qualified, that infection controls are in place, and that the proper equipment is on site. In 2012, we met the critical milestone of inspecting and assessing all out-of-hospital premises operating in Ontario. We will inspect these facilities on a regular basis and any new facilities that open for business. We have always fulfilled our public interest mandate, but now we are looking to make our processes transparent whenever possible. And so, at the end of the year, we decided to make available the results of our inspections. It allows patients to make informed decisions about their care, and that is important. Patients trust doctors with their lives. They need to have confidence that their doctors are competent. The Registration Committee ensures that doctors licensed by the college meet the high standards of the profession. We review the applications of physicians who wish to practice in Ontario but who don't have Canadian training or have not written or passed Canadian examinations. The college has worked hard for more than a decade to help alleviate the doctor shortage and to increase access to licensure for qualified international medical graduates. We've done this by developing a variety of innovative ways for physicians to demonstrate their qualifications. For example, we've created a number of pathways to registration that incorporate supervision and practice assessment. And thanks to such initiatives, we've just completed our 15th straight year of registering more physicians than in the year previous. We will continue to work to ensure that the citizens of this province have access to well-qualified doctors and high-quality care. When doctors receive a letter from the college informing them they are going to be assessed by another doctor, it can cause a lot of anxiety. I remember when I got my letter informing me that I was scheduled to have a random peer assessment. I had very little knowledge of the college back then. All I knew was that one of my peers, another cardiologist, was going to be in my office looking at my records and then asking me questions about the care I provided to my patients. I felt confident that I gave good care to my patients, but the idea of having another physician assess me was very stressful. It turned out not to be as nerve-wracking as I thought it would be. In fact, I actually enjoyed the experience and it helped me make some improvements in my practice. The assessor reviewed my records, gave me some tips and confirmed that I was providing good care. It was a nice feeling, and the feedback was really valuable. My colleagues will sometimes tell me they are dreading their upcoming assessment. I assured them that they are educational, and everyone needs feedback to improve. And even when more direction is needed, most physicians understand that the feedback is intended to help them achieve a goal we all share, becoming even better at what we do. One of the college's roles is to provide guidance to physicians on matters that relate to their practice. One of the ways we do this is through policy. And a good policy is informed by input from different perspectives. That is why we hold extensive consultations with the public, the profession, and other healthcare agencies before we approve or change a policy. During our recent consultation for our prescribing drugs policy, much of the discussion focused on the misuse and abuse of narcotics. This is an issue that the college takes very seriously. 
We were told by the public and the profession that we should focus less on reactive measures and more on preventing prescription drug abuse. So the college's updated policy requires physicians to carefully consider whether narcotics are indeed the most appropriate choice for the patient in front of them. And in fact, it may be the most appropriate choice. We don't want to curb the prescribing of narcotics when they're truly needed. We believe they play a role in safe and effective treatment, but narcotics should never be prescribed without careful clinical consideration. Each year, most Ontario residents will see a doctor. The vast majority of these patients will leave the visit impressed with their doctor's professionalism. However, that's not always the case. And sometimes the college will receive information that raises possible concerns with a physician's care or behavior. These concerns are investigated by the Inquiries, Complaints and Reports Committee. Public members of council, together with members of the medical profession, carefully consider the facts of the case. And despite an ever-increasing workload, we ensure that matters are thoroughly investigated. As a public member, I can say without hesitation that this committee is dedicated to public protection in Ontario. The safety of patients is paramount, and when a college investigation finds information to support an allegation of serious misconduct or lack of care and risk of harm to patients, the physician will be referred to the discipline committee. Discipline committee panels, which are made up of doctors and public members, make decisions based on the law and the evidence presented by the college's prosecutor and the physician's legal counsel. It's an enormous responsibility to sit in judgment of a physician. We take it very seriously and strive to make sound decisions based on the facts. In 2012, we held hearings into such matters as alleged sexual misconduct, incompetence, and disgraceful, dishonorable, and unprofessional conduct. Ultimately, our job is to protect patients, taking firm action with doctors who fail to meet the standards that the profession has set for itself is an important part of doing that job. Finding ways to earn and maintain the public's trust was at the heart of everything we did in 2012. In looking ahead, we'll continue to pursue changes that help us safeguard the public interest. We'll strive to find ways to make our processes more efficient, more effective, and more transparent. We will use social media to help us better engage with the public and the profession on issues that are important to all of us. We'll use social media to talk but we'll also use it to listen. Self-regulation is a privilege that society allows doctors to enjoy. We'll continue to find ways to justify the trust that has been placed in us. The bottom line is that patients need good doctors. The public can count on us to ensure that they can count on Ontario's doctors.